Hello and welcome. For today I've prepared um, a couple of tests of uh, older and modern uh, anti-ship missiles and we want to see how well our good old uh, Nimitz class carrier group will fare against them and what kind of weapons it will use uh, to defeat them. Just very briefly, what does the carrier group look like? It's uh, pretty, pretty standard, just uh, we have the Vinson again, like uh, we used it uh, a couple of videos earlier. Uh, it's just an emits class carrier. It's not going to have any like air patrol, just some uh, some AWACS on station. That's going to be it. And then, of course, we have, as always, one Ticonderoga cruiser and uh, one, two, three, four uh, Ali Burke destroyers. And um, in total, or like what kind of missiles are we are we having today? It's gonna be um, as you can see here. Um, we have some SM2s. Actually, we have a lot of SM2s, and uh, we also have, I think, SM3s. Or do we not? No, actually, we don't. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there are some SM3s on board. The problem is. Uh, there we don't have like when it comes to uh, ballistic missile interception uh, we don't have the necessary radars or uh, satellites in this scenario so they're not going to be used in any case what is going to be used is the very modern super super high performing but also absurdly expensive uh, SM6 missile and um, yeah so I've actually modified their behavior a little bit because um, I mean the SM6 is essentially the good old uh, yeah just throw money at the problem until it goes away and uh, yeah it's a lot a lot of money in this case I don't want them to use it on just anything uh, so I have let me see where it is rim yeah so you're basically they're basically set up like this um they're not going to use sm6 against uh, subsonic sea skimmers they are going to using uh, going to they're going to use it against uh, supersonic sea skimmers and uh, against supersonic and ballistic missiles not against subsonic missiles but for the supersonic and ballistic we have set it to uh to three rounds which means they will treat them as very extremely difficult targets uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, and then of course we have the, uh, like, ESSM, and, uh, yeah, I mean, last time we did carrier battles, we had that, that issue where, yeah, you have good interceptors, but you just have a couple dozen of them. When the Americans head out, they will pack enough ESSMs to, to solve a lot of problems. Okay, so what are we going to test on them? So let's switch over to the red side really quick. I mean, it's not necessarily uh, supposed to be China. We also have some Russian assets here, but um, yeah, first of all, like the like most basic thing you can get is uh, you get uh, a couple of missile boats like these, the type uh, 022 Hubei, and um, they will be firing these things, uh, YJ-83. And they're more or less, like as you can see here, the range is like 100 uh, nautical miles, miles. They're sea skimmers. Um, they are basically harpoons, uh, harpoon analogs, so to say. Pretty pretty standard, classic, uh, classic type of weapon against ships. Um, then, of course, uh, we will launch close to 100 Shahids at them, because Shahids are supposed to, to work against ships. So the draw the drone swarm, so to say, um, and yeah, I mean it's probably not the biggest drone swarm. I mean, you sh I mean the the idea is probably to launch a couple of hundred shahids at a, at a fleet if, if you're going down that route. But yeah, it's a it's a difficult difficult thing because um, yeah, um, any like a shahid drone will cost you maybe a couple of ten thousand dollars, and the interceptors are a couple of million, so. Um, yeah, that can be a problem, and it's probably going to be a big, big issue in the in the coming coming years. Um, and then we're going to go a little bit more crazy. Um, 
with the Bastion over here, and they, of course, they shoot Onyx missiles. And Onyx missiles, this is the first uh, first one that is a little bit faster, but it's not necessarily super modern like the the Russians uh, slash Soviets used to have that kind of stuff uh, pretty early. But um, yeah, they are generally like, they are sea skimmers, but they travel at uh, supersonic speeds, I think uh, close to th uh, Mach 3. So that makes them quite a bit more difficult to intercept. And we will be firing 24 of them. Um, so what else do we have? This is all the category sea skimmer slash cruise missile. Um, but now the question is, can we, uh, is there anything else we can use? So we are going to, going to be testing two types of uh, anti-ship ballistic missiles, which is kind of a new thing. Um, I think the Chinese are actually the first ones who, have, who are fielding something of this sort. And it's not entirely clear how well they uh, will actually perform in real life because... Um, with ballistic missiles, you always have that problem that, uh, yeah, they, they're very difficult to intercept if, uh, if they go up high enough. They will come down at completely ridiculous speeds, but uh, it's not that easy to, to hit like a certain target. That's why you usually put nukes on them. Um, but if you use them as in an anti-shipping role, then you have to be pretty accurate. And there are ways of, like, um, of being accurate with ballistic missiles or semi-accurate um, using those so-called uh, maneuverable re-entry vehicles. And these are also sometimes classified as, as hypersonic weapons, which is kind of a bit misleading because uh, that kind of technology has been around since the 80s and uh, it's, not, it's not something crazy new. But yeah, the term hypersonic has become a little bit inflationary. Um, nevertheless, this is a really interesting uh, pretty modern weapon system, uh, has a thousand nautical miles range, so it's kind of like a, a medium range uh, ballistic missile. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to target ships. And then we have another one which works kind of similarly, and that is the um, DF-26. And that is, uh, I mean, that has quite a lot more range, about like over 2000 nautical miles. And uh, yeah, you can see them here, uh, posing in front of the uh, or in front of the forbidden city and this is actually exactly where I put them in Beijing uh, right on top of Tiananmen Square and can they actually hit the carrier group from here yep they totally can they can actually reach out quite a bit further uh, I think they can actually go I can't think they can just about hit Guam if you put them somewhere over here. So they're also called the Guam Killer. Um, yes, so there are conventional versions of this, nuclear versions, and there is this new anti-ship ballistic missile version, um, which uh, is causing quite a bit of headache. Again, they have a maneuver maneuverable entry vehicle, but they're not hypersonic light vehicles. It, we don't really know how, uh, how accurate they can be in reality. But uh, yeah, so now we have a few uh, very maneuverable ballistic missiles uh, in the in the race. The question is, do we actually have any like true hypersonic weapons? And uh, what I mean by that is, uh, I would like very strongly recommend if you haven't already watched the the episode about hypersonic weapons that Perun did. And there's also one by by Binkoff. Both of them are <coughs> are very highly recommended. I'll put them uh, in the description uh, for reference. But uh, yeah, in general, when we're talking about hypersonic weapons, like the true modern hypersonic weapons, there are two two possible options. One is the scramjet powered uh, hypersonic cruise mi missile, which is something that so far doesn't exist in in reality, but might soon. And then there are the hypersonic uh, glide vehicles. So here you can see the basic uh, basic differences in flight profiles from these different different uh, platforms. The good old ballistic missile, it's just following a ballistic trajectory. It'll basically like a bullet. It's, it goes up and then goes back down. And yeah, once it hits the ground, it'll have uh, pretty ridiculous speeds. Um, 
if you're using a maneuver maneuverable re-entry vehicle, um, these usually have a little bit more shallow uh, trajectories and then they will slow down towards the end, uh, do their course correction and then uh, slam into the ground essentially. But yeah, the degree of course correction they can do is fairly limited. Um, and yeah, and then you have the hypersonic glide vehicles, which um, they will have like a rocket to shoot them up, but they will have a very, very shallow flight trajectory. And they actually come down and they will be in the atmosphere, like or the upper upper layers of the atmosphere. And uh, that will give them the ability to steer with uh, control surfaces, uh, which of course at these kind of speeds also means that they'll get very hot. Uh, but yeah, that's... A problem for the engineers to solve um, but that like also means as we will see um, a hypersonic glider is actually not as fast as a ballistic missile uh, when it hits the ground but yeah okay so what does what what kind of platforms actually exist today that use a hypersonic light vehicle like true hypersonic weapons so we have the DF-17 um, but that, unfortunately, like this is what it looks like, the little glider. Um, not, so like, at least in command, it is not designed to hit ships, so we're not going to be able to use it today. But what we can use, and something that apparently really exists on the Type 055 destroyers, is the YJ-21. And this is a true hypersonic missile, apparently, uh, launched from a ship. And we will try to hit the carrier group with it. Okay. Okay, all set. Let's go. We're going to probably have to like restart the, the scenario a few times. But uh, yeah. so there's our carrier. First of all, let's take our our crazy our crazy uh, rocket boat team and let's shoot everything at the carrier. Each of them carries eight. Uh, eight missiles, roughly equivalent to a harpoon, and uh, there they come. Let's switch to the American side. Got mode off. Yeah, they can actually see them, and probably because of the AWACS. Yes, exactly. So let's see. I'm pretty sure they'll just use ESSM to counter them. This of the group really quick, so we can see what's going on. Oh, no response yet, and it's yeah, it still like 30 miles out. Let's see. Mm, Any time now. Okay, there they come. So they're just using ESSM uh, for that. No SM2s. And that's it. They did come pretty close though, like 2.5 nautical miles. Oh, yeah, so if you have a bigger, bigger swarm of missiles, that could theoretically, could theoretically become a problem. But that's, I mean, uh, we've used harpoons successfully in the past, so uh, yeah, it's not not too surprising. Like a lot of missiles, even if they're old, uh, it's not something you want. So next we'll go for the Shahids and just launch everything at the carrier and and you better oops that was our rocket ships got destroyed oh, too bad so they're basically, they're moving at 65 knots, o point f uh, mark 0.1, so really, really slowly. But it is a lot of them. Also, I don't know what's up with the, with the flight path they're taking here. I'm pretty sure they will eventually find the carrier. Yeah, it sounds about right. It looks about right. So does the American see them? Mm, no. Right now, let's see. Now they can see them. Yeah, as you can see, it's like actually 
they have a little bit of trouble detecting them, which is completely uh, expected because um, there, there's not a lot of metal on these things. It's mostly plastics. And uh, yeah, they actually have a really, really small radar cross section and uh, they fly low and they're just small. Yeah. And they're actually having a hard time catching up with the carrier. nautical miles. Oh, there come the missiles. You're not going to attack them? Should be enough Eases M left. Chup, 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 chup. Okay. Well, that was obvious. I mean, that is apparently the AI is not, uh, for some reason, not. No not handling that well. Oh, what can you do? Weird. Uh, how much damage did we do? Now we have a little bit of... Oh, we don't actually have fire or flooding, so... Yeah, there's some damage, but uh, it's not going to sink. Um, yeah, so this is probably not, not very realistic, but yeah. Next up, the supersonic sea skimmers. There's our carrier group. Let's see, can we find the... This is probably it. So... Onyx. Okay, all Onyx are allocated. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's pretty fast. Okay, let's, let's slow it down a little bit. Let's switch over to the American side. Oh, they can actually see them. And they can see them with the ABEX, of course. And yes, now they're actually shooting uh, SM6. Again, SM6, very capable, probably, or maybe the best, uh, best anti-air missile in existence, but also certainly one of the most expensive. Onyx traveling at, let's see, Mach 2.2, uh, approximately. Not the big issue. Come on, last one, and it's dead. Okay, next up, the ballistic missiles. First of all, we will take our DF-21D. Uh, that's four missiles. And we will shoot them at the carrier. Here they come. So they go up to, I mean, I don't know if how realistic that is. I mean, 840 kilometers is already pretty high. Nowadays, you're trying to go for a little bit of a, um, uh, of a flatter trajectory. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, in the end, it's a simulation. But yeah, so we've reached our highest point, close to a thousand kilometers, and now they'll be coming back down. And uh, yes, that's that can be a problem. Let's switch over to the Americans. So first question, can the Americans see the missiles? No, they can't because we don't have the right radars. Um, so let's just switch over to God mode so we can see them. And we'll probably just stay there to, do, to not uh, freak out tech view too much. There they are. Come on. update. There we go. Slow down time a little bit. Still no detection. They will probably get detected at around uh, 100 kilometers, which is still like... Uh, 
I mean, some satellites are at that height. So, uh, still pretty impressive. Still nothing detected. Yes, now they got them. And they will be attacking them with... Uh, oh, actually an SM3 coming out. Haven't seen that before. Well, command is full of surprises. So they're trying to use the SM3. Are they using anything else? No, not, not yet. So we're talking like uh, 100 kilometers height here. Can they actually defeat all of them? Yes, they can. Wow. Nice. Well, uh, yeah, I tested this before a couple of times and they never did that. Like they always used SM6. So yeah, cool outcome. All right, next up our good old DF26. Uh, a lot more range, basically the same concept. And uh, let's see. Allocate all and shoot. There comes the missile. With the four missiles that we fired, and yeah, in this case, uh, we're probably going to go up in like the multiple thousand kilometer range. Uh, let's see, 400, 500, 600, 700. Yeah, this thing is going to space. Yeah, so just for reference, the ISS is at like 350 kilometers height. We're now like more than four or five times that. 1,500, 1,600. And should start to descend at some point. Okay, now we're seriously in descent phase. Still very high up, but speed is increasing. Just for reference, right now we're at like, okay, Mach 8, Mach 9, Mach 10. Slow down a little bit. Mach 11. And yeah, that's just, just normal for a cruise missile. I mean, it's still way out of the atmosphere. Like uh, you will have serious atmospheric drag like below 150 or something. So they have released their little, their little um, vehicle, like their uh, their actual actual warhead. And let's see if they can hit anything, because yeah, intercepting these is very very difficult. Uh, yeah, we're at Mark fifteen. That's probably where it tops off. The problem is hitting something with. Uh, with a vehicle like this is also very difficult, and yeah, the carrier group isn't even isn't even trying to resist. Uh, let me switch over. That will of course freak out tech view, but uh, so can we actually hit these with something? Switch off tech view really quick. No, so the SM6. Uh, Target speed is, speed is too high. We have SM3s, SM3s, SM3s. Uh, maybe we fired them all. There they are. Yeah, not uh, out of valid interception envelope. Okay, so these missiles are like, the speed is too high for, uh, for SM6 and SM3s can't engage. So now these will definitely hit the target. Let's see, put got mode on, speed at five times. Now they're starting to slow down, which is expected because they're hitting the denser parts of the atmosphere. Radar on, this is where they course correct. It's still at like 76 kilometers height. Let's go to one time speed. 
Yeah. No, we're just dropping like a rock. And... Yeah, looks okay. And... Yeah. So what happened here? Um, okay, we got jammed a little bit. Jammed successfully. Spoof jammed. Okay, so... They essentially missed the target because of E-War. Alright. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, there is no, like, the, the carrier group, at least uh, within the game, the carrier group does not have any means of defending against something that just drops out of the sky at Mark 15. Alright, next up, the hypersonic weapons or hypersonic missiles in the form of the YJ-21. So uh, a Type 55 carries, or supposed to carry 16, I don't think, I don't know if they're actually already deployed, but uh, yeah. The missiles themselves seem to be operational. So we'll just shoot everything at the carrier, and let's see, we can probably just switch over. Okay, let's see, there they come. We'll see if we can follow their trajectory a little bit. Let's go to 15 times speed. So first of all, they're going to shoot up, as you would expect. This is like they're powered, like where their rocket booster is active. And then, as you can see here, they're n not even like... Uh, highest point was what, like 50 kilometers? Th that's like, uh, if you remember, like the smaller uh, ballistic missile that we had went up to uh, to uh, I think a couple of hundred and these they stay below a hundred like well below a hundred and now they'll drop down again uh, and they're actually still in pretty dense uh, dense atmosphere layers and they will release their uh, their hypersonic light there they are we just lost the track and now it's the glide vehicle as you can see here and they will then just surf the atmosphere to their target. And they are at this point at Mach 12. They're probably going to slow down though. Like it's the problem with hypersonic weapons. Uh, since they're so close, uh, so close to the ground and in thick atmosphere, they will, they will lose speed. And also, Yes, they can maneuver. They can actually maneuver pretty violently, but uh, that will also lose them a lot of speed, and then they actually become easier to intercept. So let's see what our SM6s can do against this. As you can see, the carrier group. Uh, I mean, I forced it to launch three missiles at every uh, at every uh, vampire. So, oh, some some are coming through. Okay, yes, so we got. We got a couple of hits there. Oh, yeah, the carrier's dead. Yeah, so that can definitely happen. So how many did we how many did we manage to intercept? Okay, so we actually got a couple of hits in, but not all of them actually destroyed uh, the missile they were targeting. And uh, yes, we had actually two YJ-21s. Uh, hit the carrier and that was apparently enough to kill it off. I mean at these speeds uh, the kinetic energy alone is uh, Actually does a lot of damage and then they I think they have like an 80 a, uh, 800 kilogram warhead. So yeah, so this carrier is absolutely doomed. It's on fire flooding it's going down Okay yeah, so this has been just a little demonstration of uh, what older and newer anti-ship missile systems can do to a uh, full U.S. carrier group. And uh, yeah, as you can see, they are pretty good with like the older sea skimming stuff, even supersonic uh, sea skimmers like the like the Onyx. Not really a problem. These new kinds of uh, of devices, like um, actual like anti-ship ballistic missiles and hypersonic missiles, uh, 
um, they are, at least on paper, uh, they are pretty dangerous. But yeah, we've never, we've not yet seen them in action. Like there are a couple of question marks around how accurate a ballistic missile can be and how well the uh, the hypersonics actually work. And uh, even then, you have to keep in mind that a hypersonic missile is, uh, I think, at least 10 times the cost of uh, of uh, something comparable like a Larazm. Uh, but yeah, pretty interesting, at least in my opinion. Okay, um, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.